Good morning, friends. I'm Dewey, and my Tech Talk topic for today is create a database quickly and easily. If you'd like to create a database of names and addresses or other information for sending holiday cards, or maybe one that lists essential information about everyone you know, since not everyone, of course, has a smartphone or is in your Google contacts, or maybe you've agreed to be the membership secretary for a small club of 20 or 30 members, or maybe a large club of several hundred. So how can you find an easy way to create a database that's a cinch to use and create? Well, I have an answer. If you own a computer with Microsoft Word, doesn't matter whether your version of Word is old or new, it works. Word provides an easy way to create a database. Zoe, you're full of it. Word is for writing letters making documents. You gotta use a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel or maybe Microsoft Access to do a database. Well, sorry, my friend, but I disagree. And I'm gonna show you why in the next couple of minutes. To create a database in Microsoft Word, you need to go to the table function. Regrettably, a lot of Word users don't pay very much attention to tables, but wow, are they valuable in my opinion. And when I searched YouTube, I wasn't even able to find a single YouTube video that demonstrates what I'm about to show you in the next few minutes about creating tables in Microsoft Word or databases. The first step in creating a database is to decide which categories or elements of member information you need at a minimum. Typically, perhaps five to seven are needed and rarely more than eight or nine. For the club that I started recently, I decided to use six columns or six, six member information categories and seven rows for the members that I currently have. I'll start by showing you how to insert a table that self-regulates the size of each cell. For tables that have six or more categories, I do suggest that you bring up Microsoft Word with a landscape orientation. If it's less than four or five, you can do it in, in picture orientation. Well, we're gonna go on now. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to insert, and here we have table. And you notice we have a grid here that's 10 wide and eight long, and we could select any combination of groups and click on it, and we would have that table. But the problem is that that leaves us without a special, a special thing of adjusting the size of our our cells. So we're going to click on insert table where we have, we can of course put in our columns and rows in the upper part. And here under auto fit behavior, we can click auto fight, auto fit to contents. And, and that will self size the width of our cells and make it more efficient. Well, we're going to get out of there now. And so, uh, um, we guess we got to get out of there. Yeah. Anyway, we get out of there now. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to name my table. Our club is called the Tech Nerds Club. Now, we're, we're really nice people, very techy. We don't spell very well. Well, anyway, uh, another good thing to do is to always put down a version number for your database. Because as you add and subtract names, you can... You can put the data, if you use the date code like I'm using, see this one's done on the, uh, March 4th, 2021, uh, then you'll know just when things were done. Okay, well, we've got that, that title and you want to be sure to save it. You always save your stuff. Now we're gonna insert our table and it's kind of funny looking now because of the auto adjust feature and we'll put in our, our categories. Most people put in last name first. And then we have the first name. Now, if you'd prefer it the other way, it's your table, do it the way you want it. I know at one table that I used a couple of years ago, I had the first name because it was small and we were on a first name basis. Okay. Well, now we'll go on and we'll put in home address. That's, if you're going to mail things, you want to know that. I put down city, state, zip. You might wonder why put all three of those together. Why not separate? Separate takes more space. If you need the zip code for sorting, well, you can make two columns, one for city state, one for zip. 
And then of course you need a, should have a phone number if people are willing to give it and an email address. Now I'm gonna start filling in my very first name. It's good old Bobby Drood. He lives on Nantucket Drive in Janesville, Wisconsin. Phone number, there's his email address. And uh, uh, he's a great fictional friend. Uh, and I'll insert some other of my fictional friends here. I've got Mark who lives in uh, BC and I've got uh, Nick who lives in Pittsburgh and Carl and Walter and Marty. And of course I've got myself. This is a great group of fictional friends, except I'm not fictional, at least the last time I looked. Okay, well, we've got a nice looking little table here, uh, but one thing, it isn't sorted. We don't, we aren't in alphabetical order. And that's one of the nice things Microsoft provides a way. All we do is select it and we can go, we can go to uh, the home ribbon and right here in the middle is the sorting function. Notice there's an A over a Z with a downward arrow. And if we click on that, note what happens. We get a dialog box. We're sorting by last name. We're using text. If we were sorting by zip code, we could choose numbers. Or if we're sorting, and let's say we have a, a, a date code, we could sort by date code, but you have to remember the best way to do a date code if you're gonna sort, okay. I can tell you about that another time. Okay, so now we've got this uh, done and we click okay and look, all of my names, our last names are now in alphabetical order and all their information, all each member's information went with them in the sorting. That is great. Well, now we've got it alphabetized, but I will say one thing, it looks awfully scrunched. It's pretty nice to have a single line in each cell, but it sure would be nice to have some white space. There is a way, believe it or not, to have white space. And here's the way to do it. We select the table and we go over here to layout. And right here is spacing, note that. And if we click, we have spacing before, which means a little bit above the name and after, which is below the name. And so if we click on this arrow, we can add space before the name or above it. If we click on this arrow, we add space below the name. Now look, hasn't that improved the situation um, a great deal? So it's, it's much better looking. Now we're gonna also, if we wanna add a little color, we can do this. We could select the header line and uh, we could go over here to the home screen and I could go to uh, this fill here and click on uh, perhaps this and, and look, we've now got a pretty nice, Light blue, we can choose other colors, but that looks pretty, pretty decent and such. So another thing we can do, we could, uh, we could uh, put, a, put a little gray effect in every other line to help distinguish it for readability and so forth. Now, there's one other thing, uh, that I, a couple of other things that I'd like to mention. One is that one advantage of Microsoft Word, of course, you can easily email this to any other members in your group who have Microsoft Word. If they don't have Microsoft Word, there's another way to do it. You can, you can make a PDF of it. Send, in fact, that's probably the best way, make a PDF and send it to all members. Now, if you're sending it as a Microsoft Word document, you might wanna make it a read-only copy so some people don't go in and mess around with your data. Okay, and uh, one other point in all this, some people want to know, can you use this for mail merge? Well, I've used mail merge for years up until about maybe seven, eight years ago. And I don't know if you can do this in current versions. I think you can, but I haven't investigated how to do it. But they talk about delimiters in doing a mail merge. But anyway, it's a mail merge, if, if you know what that is. That's when you send out you create a letter that you want to send the same letter out to everyone. Maybe it's a mailed letter, maybe it's an email or whatever. Uh, it's, it's easy to do. Well, anyway, uh, it's, this has been fun and I hope you've enjoyed my presentation. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day. And by the way, this is my tech talk for today and I'm sticking with it. Bye now.